Everspace 2 is an early access indie game out on Steam and put out by Rockfish Games. It's the sequel, obviously enough, to Everspace. I've been waiting for this one for a while and broke my rule of not buying early access games. I've purposely held off on reading any other reviews before making this video, so I could give my unbiased opinion. Although taking a peek at the Steam page, it seems to have a very positive rating, which is always a good indicator. It bills itself as a fast-paced single-player spaceship shooter with deep exploration, tons of loot, and RPG elements. I can say it fulfills those expectations. It reminds me of a space battle looter shooter. In this game, you are your ship. There's no getting out and exploring on foot, except for cutscenes. This doesn't really detract from its appeal, though. As mentioned, the game is still in early access, and they make sure to remind you of this fact often. Without giving spoilers, in the game you play as a mining pilot, thrust into adventure. Your ship can be upgraded with various components, such as guns, missiles, shields, energy core, and lots of other components. A huge part of the fun in this game is upgrading your equipment. New ship parts can be found from loot, buying them at outposts, or by crafting them yourself. And are there ever lots of weapon options, from rail guns for sniping long distances, my personal favorite, to auto cannons, gauze rifles, beam lasers, scatter guns, missiles, and a ton more. With all the different choices, you can adapt the combat to your personal style, and figuring out what that style is is a fun process too. The game has an experience and leveling system, and at various level intervals you can select a new perk to give your pilot. You can also collect companions, and each has their own perk structure. You'll fly around in instanced environments with two different flight modes, normal flight and impulse for longer distances. By engaging your FTL drive, you can enter a subspace area where exploration is possible. While you're traveling from destination to destination, you can see various other locations pop up, from other ship signatures to distress calls. Some of these will introduce you to new locations that are worth exploring, with hidden loot abounding. Not all locations will be explorable at your level. You might run into an area populated by higher level ships that will make quick work of you, and you'll have to come back later once you've gained power to clear them out and see what the area was hiding. Some of these locations introduce puzzle mechanics, usually based around placing the right energy core into the right socket, or figuring out a button combination to shoot to gain access to hidden areas. Some of these were fun, others I admit I got frustrated with quickly. However, where the gameplay shines is combat. The dogfighting is arguably the most engaging aspect of the gameplay. Each weapon feels different and punchy, and you can really feel it hit your opponents in a way that is very, very satisfying. Almost no one is a one-hit kill, and it takes a bit of skill to dodge in and out of all the enemies to whittle down each one. And when you do, they explode in the most gratifying way. Technically, the game supports a joystick or a HOTA system, though I never got one to work on my computer. It's probably for the best, though, because the developers have stated that although these are supported, they are not the best way to play the game or the way that they intended for it to be played. The gameplay is held together by a main storyline, which drives the narrative. This is told through cutscenes and voiceovers. To me, this is the weakest link in the game. I personally didn't find the storyline particularly engaging, and I felt that it just served to shuttle you from one new area to the next. That's just me though, you might feel different. Crafting is an option, and you have to balance the new loot you acquire between selling for credits or dismantling for crafting parts. Once you get enough crafting materials, you can craft improvised components, or any recipes that you know to create new and better ship parts. All tied together, this leads to a very satisfying gameplay loop. The urge to explore is always there and sated by tons of new locations found as you unveil the map. Each one promising a new loot to be found and the never-ending quest to improve your ship so that you can tackle even more in difficult content. It's an age-old gameplay loop that has persisted for a reason, because it's fun. This is a fun little game, but not without its problems. The core gameplay loop is fun and addictive, but the story left me cold, as well as some of the puzzle elements, which I just found myself wanting to skip past. Also, it's clear that it's early access, and I can only imagine the improvements that will be made at release. As for me, though, I'm enjoying it. It's immersive, the graphics are gorgeous. This is a game that kind of reminds me of No Man's Sky. Not because it in any way has similar gameplay, because it doesn't but because it's a game that I can sit down and just play mindlessly for hours and simply enjoy for itself. It helps me blow steam off at the end of the day when I'm not wanting anything terribly deep like Star Citizen. 
I'm not necessarily convinced that it was good enough to have broken my no early access rule for, but I think that once it's in full release, it'll be absolutely amazing. But if you're hungering for a new space shooter though, you could do a lot worse than picking this one up.